Your Eminence, thank you for welcoming us to the Cathedral of St. Matthew the Apostle. As a member of the College of Cardinals, what does it mean for you to serve as patron of cross-Catholic outreach and publicly support our mission to serve the poorest of the poor? Well, I, I believe that uh, the College of Cardinals has been uh, summoned uh, by Pope Francis, but even before Pope Francis, uh, Pope Benedict and Pope John Paul II uh, wanted the college to be uh, more directly engaged in the ministry and the service of the poor. Um, Pope Francis, of course, has made that a, a, a hallmark of his papacy, and it follows on his uh, experience as the Archbishop of Buenos Aires, where he was deeply involved with the uh, poor and the neighborhoods in Buenos Aires, which were uh, filled with uh, people living on the margins. A few weeks ago, at the start of the Catholic Social Ministry gathering, you said the poor, immigrants, prisoners, the physically or emotionally impaired often find it impossible to attain justice because their voices have been silenced or ignored. How has Pope Francis helped them to be heard? Well, in, in, in many respects, he has become a voice for them. Uh, and he has gone out to uh, places where uh, they live and where they uh, reside uh, to highlight their plight, but also to give them hope. Uh, the wonderful thing about the Holy Father and his devotion to the poor, he's not just simply there to provide sustenance or uh, assistance, although that he does in many different ways, but he's there to provide hope. And for many of these people, for the people that, uh, that we serve, uh, the gift of hope is as important as a loaf of bread. The church teaches us that the Eucharist is the source and summit of our Christian life. How is the Eucharist realized in the ministry of cross-Catholic outreach as we minister to the poor in dioceses throughout the world, and how does the Eucharist bring us all together in communion? Well, first of all, the Eucharist is the, the heart of our identity as, uh, as Catholics. Uh, we leave the baptismal font and uh, like youngsters having been born, we're hungry, and we're hungry for the Word of God and for the bread of life. And I, I would hope that uh, uh, the work that uh, Cross does uh, reminds people of the centrality of uh, our outreach to those who are hungry, not just for food, but hungry for uh, a future, hungry for a direction, hungry for hope. The church is currently in the midst of the Synod on Synodality, this two-year process of reflection and sharing. What do you think is the best potential outcome of this process and what do you hope to see? Well, I think uh, the best outcome would be that uh, Catholics and their neighbors, other people of other religions, because they too uh, are invited uh, to, to to listening sessions and to opportunities to dialogue. Uh, the, the best outcome would be that the human family uh, finds a, um, a successful way to talk to one another and to listen to one another. Uh, the, the listening sessions that are taking place in many different contexts throughout the world are, are not simply opportunities for people to highlight uh, problems or difficulties or, or their gripes. Uh, they are opportunities for people to hear the voices of their neighbors and hopefully to hear them in a way that uh, they can respect and deepen their appreciation for their, their neighbors and in a special way for those who are poor. One of the Faith in Action projects that Cross Catholic Outreach offers to parishes is to participate in food packings to feed the hungry in the developing world. What would you say to encourage people to make a difference and participate in such an event? Well, I think, to be perfectly honest, the pandemic has, has provided a, uh, 
a welcome opportunity for people to uh, be aware of uh, the hungers that uh, neighbors have. Uh, Cross Catholic obviously uh, has, has a long history of going out to uh, the places where the poor live or are forced to live. But the pandemic has also uh, provided an opportunity for people to realize that uh, we need each other. We, we will not exit the pandemic alone. We will only exit it together. Uh, and here in the Archdiocese of Washington, I am so proud to know and to have witnessed the generosity of our people who have helped in many ways, some uh, providing uh, food pantries or expanding parish food pantries, some uh, engaging young people and helping them prepare uh, bag lunches for people who live on the streets. Uh, because we have been engaged in an, in an experience of isolation, it's, it's also heightened uh, our need and our desire in many situations to reestablish the bonds that unite us. Your minutes. we were talking before we started recording, you've been a bishop for nearly 40 years in the Diocese of Belleville, for a number of years in the Archdiocese of Atlanta, now here in Washington. What's been your observation in these different parts of the country of how Catholic charity impacts the poor here in the United States? Well, the, the work that Catholic charities and Catholic social outreach uh, communities and, and organizations do uh, puts the best face on the Catholic Church. Whether it's Catholic Church, or Catholic Charities, or Cross Catholics, whether it's St. Vincent de Paul, or uh, other organizations that uh, reach out to the homeless, to the hungry, to the aged, to people who are on the margins of society. It tells the world who we are, that we are a loving family, and, and when we are at our best, we, we do that for one another. Um, so I'm just very, very privileged and very proud, not only of the, the work that uh, has been done here in the Archdiocese of Washington during the pandemic, but it also highlights for me uh, many of the opportunities that I witnessed uh, in Chicago, my home diocese, and in the Diocese of Belleville, and in the Archdiocese of Atlanta and now here in Washington. People are amazingly good if we give them the opportunity and the occasion to demonstrate their kindness, their charity, and their willingness to, uh, to help their neighbors. Finally, your, your eminence, the Catholic Church has a long tradition of helping the poor and the suffering. Is there a particular saint who inspires you in this regard? Well, you know, to be perfectly honest, I, when I think about that question, almost all of the saints, in some form or fashion, were men and women of charity. Maybe they lived in a, in a community that was suffering from a, uh, a pandemic disease. Uh, maybe like St. Teresa of Calcutta, they, they went out and found people living on the streets and the gutters. Maybe they were people who were engaged in uh, helping the sick Camillus de Lillis, you know, to, to name one saint is to possibly get into trouble because the saints are all, have all been men and women of extraordinary charity and insight. They found people who needed help and they provided that help. Your Eminence, thank you so much for your time today. It's a blessing to have your support. And on behalf of everyone at Cross Catholic Outreach, thank you for serving as our patron, helping to raise awareness for our work to help the poorest of the poor around the world.